from the Rum Travelers. And I want to wish everybody a happy Friday and uh, give you guys an opportunity to take a little look inside of our bar. And tonight, uh, it's Friday night, we are going to make a classic shaken daiquiri tonight. Um, this is my favorite cocktail. It's a very simple cocktail. It's very easy to make. Anybody can make this. Um, it's very refreshing. I also like that it doesn't have any ice in it. Um, so it's a very easy to, easy to drink cocktail, and it's perfect for um, just about any occasion. Uh, so a classic shaken daiquiri is very simple. It's not uh, those frozen things that you see at, at those, um, you know, those, those tourist bars. A daiquiri, really all it is, is three ingredients. It's rum, lime, and sugar. That's it. Uh, you can vary the portions of those a little bit to your unique preference. Um, I've got a recipe here that I like to use. So we'll go over the quantities in just a minute. Uh, but for your daiquiri out of the rum, you can use a lot of different kinds of rum. Um, this evening, we are going to be using this rum right here. This is called Rum Fire, as you can see. This is a Jamaican rum. It's a Jamaican overproof rum. It's made by hand in a state in Jamaica. Uh, this rum comes in at 126 proof. Here's Joe. Joe, say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. Uh, so yes, 126 proof. Rum, uh, that's uh, 63%. And we chose this rum. Uh, we felt it was a good fit for uh, what's going on in the world right now. Um, it's got uh, plenty of, it meets that 60% you know, criteria for uh, killing germs. So we will not have any germs inside of our bodies once we drink this. We're using it as hand sanitizer as well. Well, no, that's a base of rum. We do have hand sanitizer here, so we don't need to use the rum for that. Good point. Okay. <laughs> All right, so really, though, you can use any kind of rum you like. Um, white rums work very well. You can also use an aged rum. Uh, but I tend to steer towards these, uh, these nice overproof rums. They, uh, they give it a lot of, especially this rum, this being a Jamaican rum, um, it's got a lot of what they call the funk. Uh, so it's this really flavorful, um, kind of ripe fruit flavors that come uh, into the rum from, uh, from the fermentation and the distillation processes that they use there at Hamden. Um, maybe when all of this is done and over with, we'll actually get an opportunity to visit Hamden Estate. We're really looking forward to doing that one day soon. Yeah, it's a shame we haven't been to any of the Jamaica distilleries. We were hoping to do that actually next month, but like she said, not haven't had a chance because of what's going on. So we'll make do with what we have here and drink Jamaican rum at home. I was thinking about maybe a rum and ting later as well. So. Um, one of the important things for a daiquiri is uh, you, you want to use fresh limes. Um, you can buy the store-bought lime juice, but you just don't get that fresh flavor. It's just preferable to have fresh limes. So I'm going to let Missy tell you a little bit more about the cocktail. I'm going to cut up, cut up some limes, get some fresh juice squeezed so that we can uh, mix it into the cocktail. Yeah, and hopefully you guys are as fortunate as we were at uh, our local grocery store. Uh, there were plenty of limes. There might not have been any toilet paper or any bread, but we don't need those things. We were able to get tons and tons of limes. We're going to be having lots of daiquiris this weekend. Um, so the recipe, a uh, very, very simple recipe here. It just calls for, um, the one that we use is going to be two ounces of rum. It's going to be one ounce of lime juice, fresh lime juice is preferred. And then three quarter ounce of simple syrup. Um, so we've got a, a, a ready-made product here. Um, this is far from the simple syrup. Um, you can certainly make your own simple syrup. It's very easy to do. Uh, I'm just lazy. It's Friday. It's been a long week, so I'm going to use this uh, pre-made simple syrup here. Um, so yeah, there's two ounces of rum, one ounce of lime, and a three-quarter ounce of simple syrup. And you can always sweet that too to your own preferences. If you don't want it as sweet, you just dial back that simple syrup a little bit. Uh, but the fresh lime juice here really makes a, a, a big difference. It's going to taste a lot better than that stuff in a bottle. That stuff's kind of gross. Um, oh, juicy lime. Nice. Yeah, we picked some <laughs> nice big limes we got at the store. Um, so we're getting plenty of juice there. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to use a cocktail shaker for this. Um, and first thing, I'm going to fill this guy with ice. I think uh, we've got tiny little tongs. This, this may take a while, one cube at a time. So if anybody's really bored, here we go. This is really exciting stuff. Help first. You don't want to use your hands. Oh yeah, no hands. This is this is a this is a sanitary deck right here. Don't let that lime smell amazing. I know these are some juicy limes. I think we're gonna have to power wash the bar here <laughs> to get all the lime juice off when we're done. Well, they say that uh, lime prevents scurvy, right? So that would be one less disease to worry about. I 
just got some in my eye. Oh, dear. <laughs> Should get you some safety goggles. I, I think, though, the, the personal protective equipment, if that's, that's, we're not going to use any of that. That's reserved for medical staff. Right exactly. Now. We don't want to use up the supplies they need in the hospitals Absolutely. and the emergency room. So. Absolutely not. All right. All so, right, so let's, let's, let's do this thing. Would you like to do the honors of the rum? Uh, you go ahead and pour the rum. Uh, I'm still trying to clean up the mess from the uh -huh. lines. So. All right. All right, so here we go. Uh, we're going to crack open this spray bottle of rum fire here. And I've uh, got a nice device here. Most bartenders, most cocktail enthusiasts, it's called a jigger. Uh, it's a two ounce measurement on one side and a one ounce measurement on the other side. I'm gonna make two cocktails, so I'm gonna need four ounces of this beautiful rum here. And guys, I will warn you, I am not a bartender by trade. So I'm very slow and very messy. And, you know, just please forgive me for that. <laughs> That's what paper towels are for. Absolutely. If you can find any at the store. All right, you smell the rum? This rum oh, wow. smells amazing. So this is not your standard issue plain white rum that you guys have probably seen at the bars. This is a super flavorful, delicious uh, Jamaican rum. What is it? There's the top. We don't want to it. Yeah. All right, so we've got our rum. That is the most important. Now we need uh, two ounces of lime juice. Now here's, here's the tricky part. I'm going to pour over this towel. Let's see how much of the best you can make. <laughs> I'm going to pour over this towel just to make sure that I don't make too much of a mess of a I can smell that rum medicine. Dude. I know, it's delicious, right? Oh, look at that. Look, he, he Exactly is, he is two special. ounces. Exactly what we need. Perfect. All right, there we go. All right. And then the simple syrup. Go for it. Yeah, one and a half simple syrup. So I'm going to eyeball this. We have a uh, two ounce on one side and one ounce on the other. It's got a little line right in the middle. It's hard to see. Inside. Oh, it sure does. Yeah. Wow, that makes it easy. I don't even have to think. Let's go ahead and do it. So, one and a half ounces yeah, yeah. of simple syrup. Go ahead and add that to the shaker. Go ahead and just catch the drips there so it doesn't spill in the bar. Yeah, nobody likes a sticky bar. I mean, it's going to be sticky, but let's try to minimize the stickiness. And you give it a shake. So, um, Make it as long as you want to get it nice and chilled, so you can pour it in glass, uh, so you've got a nice chill to it. Um, nobody likes a warm backer. I mean, I like a warm backer. I'm not thinking. It's a backer. It's a proper backer. I would do that every time. She likes any backer. That's true. Uh, so yeah. I, I make sure to do this part. Um, that shaker gets cold. Like, how many left are doing it? Look at my hands. I can't hold on to that thing for more than a second. It's like, it's cold. So when I do it, you guys allow me. I use a uh, pop holder. Meanwhile, I'm shaking, and there's a nice frost developing on the outside of the shaker here, so it's pretty nice and cool. Matter of fact, I'm starting to lose sensation in my fingers, so I think it's about done right now. So go ahead and pop the top off, and we can strain the ice out of it. And uh, so it's important to, to use your strainer top on your uh, shaker there. We don't want any ice in there. We just want that nice, cold, frosty daiquiri. Look at that. Lovely. So, oh, it smells delicious. Mm -hmm. Fresh lime, Jamaican rum, nothing better than that. Now, of course, every cocktail is better with a garnish, so I did save a little lime meal to go ahead and stick on the edge of the glass. So you gotta have the, the garnish, or you don't, whatever your preference is. You just wanna make the drink the way you like it. Not everybody has the same taste, so you might want a different rum. Maybe you like the store-bought lime juice, or maybe you wanna put a different kind of uh, juice in there with it. Uh, but a classic daiquiri is lime juice, sugar, and rum, that's it. So, uh, um, shall we give it a taste and see how yeah, it comes out? Yeah. So cheers, everybody. Happy Friday. Sorry we can't see each other in person, but you know, this is the next best thing. Thank goodness for technology. So cheers. Cheers from the rum drop. Cheers. That's good. That's a good dagger we make. Yes. Oh my. Another kick with that. Uh, it is 100 and, excuse me, not, that's a different one. We'll talk about that a little later. Uh, that's 126 proof rum, so uh, yeah, it's there. It's got a little heat, but it's, it's got that funkiness coming through, that delicious, that kind of earthiness, the grassiness of the, the Jamaican um, rum from Hamden. It's uh, quite a cocktail, honestly, with the rum fire. It's it's um, 
That's why people use the, uh, the rum fire in, in daiquiris, because it has that unique flavor. Um, you could go with a dark rum, like one of the signature Appletons. You could go with other white rums. Uh, so try it out. Just do whatever you have at home. Give it a try. Uh, but it's basic, simple ingredients. Three things you need and some ice. Alright, so Joe, who do we have? Is anybody online? Anybody yeah, Paul, Paul is watching. So oh, hi, Paul. Hello, girl. I miss you. Glad you joined us. Um, but yeah, uh, so I don't know. Anything else you want to say about the classic chicken daiquiri? Uh, it's it's just it's the most fabulous drink. Um, I think daiquiri gets kind of a, a bad reputation out there. Kind of like rum gets a bad reputation, right? There's a lot of bad daiquiris in the world. You see these machines with this pink stuff floating around being swirled, and it just tastes like candy. It doesn't taste anything like rum. Yeah, um, I'm not, not not to say anything really negative about places like you know, that have those machines, those Oasis machines. Because people really do love their frozen drinks. But, yeah, uh, but yeah. you can't beat a shaken daiquiri when you compare it with a frozen daiquiri. I'm always going to pick the shaken daiquiri. Absolutely. It's too good to pass up on. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we had to, to say about the daiquiri tonight. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well, staying healthy. And uh, if you're at home watching, hello. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Paul, thanks for joining us last <laughs> minute there. We're, uh, you missed the whole presentation for drinking daiquiri so. So yeah, you're, you're catching us at the tail end here. But uh, go back and rewatch, you'll have some fun. Um, but yeah, we're, and Carly, Carly just joined Hi. us too. So. <laughs> our, our friend up in Atlanta. So uh, yeah, Carly, we miss you, love you. Um, and you guys tell we're really like socially deprived. We, are, we love going out and seeing people and traveling and this whole thing has been, a, you know, obviously, you know, we're not in a bad situation. We're in a great situation, we're very thankful for that. But, it's, it's really challenging to not be able to see our friends and, and not travel. So look, good to see you guys, you know, virtually. I see lots of little things popping up on Joe's phone yeah. over there. Hi, Dee. Thanks for joining Hi. us. So um, before we wrap up, you want to see anybody Wait. has? Pa Paul requests that we start over. Oh, okay. Well, we have to drink these first real quick. And yeah, we're going to have to down these real quick. And maybe we'll just go live again in a few minutes when we make the next batch. So. Yeah, next, so the next batch, you want to talk about uh, the ones we made the other day. So when all this virus stuff started, you know, everyone was kind of taking it really lightly. Before everything got, everything got super serious, um, we decided we would make some daiquiris. And we said, you know, they're talking about using rum as hand sanitizer. you got to use this really strong rum. So uh, we decided to make daiquiris out of this gem of our collection. I don't know if you can see that. Actually, let me bring it a little closer to the camera. You can actually see the label. It says right on it, very strong rum. So uh, and we, said, we said, let's go ahead and make a daiquiri out of this, which, uh, which is delicious. But uh, this is the strong rum from St. Vincent. It's sunset rum, but the locals there call it strong rum. And uh, we made one, it's 169 proof. So this is the strongest rum we have yeah. seen so, ever. So this, the one we're using right here in our daiquiri, the rum fire is 126. This is 169 proof. So if you think that this is strong, this is in a whole other category. But this has a completely unique flavor as well. It's a, yeah, it doesn't, have the it doesn't taste anything like oh, this. It doesn't have the same earthy qualities. It's a little bit more cane forward, I would guess I would call it. You have a little bit more of that cane juice flavor it's, versus... It's a sweeter cane juice flavor yeah. versus like a grassy, um, you know, kind of funky flavor. Um, so it's lighter, this stuff's made on a column still. Um, it's actually, it's really great. Um, I gotta dig up the pictures and put them on our site one of these days. I have a lot of time now, theoretically, so maybe I can do it soon. Um, but when you go to the distillery, um, the locals in particular, uh, they can bring their own container and they can uh, fill it up with the strong rum. That's really the, what the locals uh, like to drink. Going to the distillery with their own container saves them the cost of packaging. So they can just bring uh, a sanitized container to the distillery and fill it up like you would go and get gas in your car from a gas pump. Now, oddly enough, to buy this rum at the distillery with your own container, it does actually come out of a gas pump, which uh, uh, I really guess then you can see the little wheel turning and uh, counting off how many milliliters or liters you're actually putting into your container. Uh, but I, we just think that's hilarious that the locals can go in with a five gallon jug and the little wheel turns and when they get a uh, full container, they put the thing back on the pump and then pay for however much uh, volume that they just uh, purchased. Liters. Liters. Yeah, so yep. By liter. Um, I think it's probably like, I don't know, a dollar a liter. It's so inexpensive there. I think that big bottle, you know, the 750 
milliliter bottle. I want to say down there, if you buy it at a local place, it's probably going to cost you like eight bucks. Yeah, I think we. Ten bucks now, it's five dollars. Yeah, it's yeah, gone up a little on price, but when we first went to St. Vincent, it was eight dollars a bottle for yeah. that strong rum. Uh, the um, if you got a couple comments on here, I want to get to. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, Paul uh, asked if we had any rum. Well, Paul, uh, I mean, you got to be prepared for these situations. You never know uh, when you're going to get, you know, a stay-at-home order. And if you're going to have a stay-at-home, you better have some rum. So we have, I mean, we have a few. We, yeah, we might have a couple. Uh, we even went to the store today. You know, rum travelers can't travel far to get rum, but we can at least go to our local liquor store. Uh, we also had a comment from Carly when we were talking about the strong rum. She said, just uh, take a shot of after chalk. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> See, I don't do that anymore. I'm a rum traveler now. We don't drink any after shock. That was a long time ago. Those are good, fun memories, but I... I, I think, I, thought we, I think we had a bottle when we moved down here, but it's gone now. I think we... Uh, so when we moved uh, into this house from our old house here in Florida, we kind of went through our bar because we had all of this, we didn't have this much rum, but we had a lot of rum to pack up. And we, we're going through and we're finding some obscure liquors in our bar. And we're like, where did this even come from? I'm never going to drink this. So uh, we had a little party and we put all that liquor in a box by the front door. Um, everybody was 21 and over, of course. Uh, but we set it in the box and we just said, free to go home. And I think that's where the aftershock ended. No, I think we actually drank the rest of the aftershock when the party uh, came for a visit, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't drink the aftershock. I, I think we at least did a shot of it before somebody oh. else took it away. But. Oh, man, that's scary stuff. You guys, I mean, most people are more familiar with, uh, with Fireball. you got to rewind the clock a few more years to get back to the uh, aftershock. And it's Brother Avalanche, the mint-flavored uh, liquor. Yes, the, the, the little-known blue <laughs> blue, blue liqueur. <laughs> uh, what were we drinking back then? I don't know. I just, I, I mean, I have fond memories of, of that stuff. Um, but I, I also remember the bottle would somehow was growing like rock candy inside, like the sugar, those those things you would. I think the sugar was, crystals, yeah. It was like some kind of experiment when you were a kid, right? You made like your own rock, rock garden, candy. Mm -hmm. rock candy garden. So in the bottle inside of this aftershock liquor, there's there's candy in there. So we would like jam at it. We'd stick us, you know. Coat hanger. Oh, I <laughs> yeah, you stuck a coat in here and you chip it out of there. Yeah. Oh my, it's a miracle we survived yeah. uh, our team. I mean, excuse <laughs> me, our, our, our 21 and up early years of our 20s. That's right, uh, early years of our 20s, because you had to be 21 to drink in the United States. So We've had a couple more people join us. Ah, great. So hi, Donna, how you doing? Uh, good to see you. Uh, I don't know if you guys were planning on your Disney trip this year, uh, but you know if you end up uh, once everything's back to normal, if you come down, let us know. And Milton, Milton's with us, so good to see you, Milton. Hope you're still on. Uh, we did end up buying oh, look. one of the uh, bowls. This thing is huge. I can <laughs> so, put my head in there. This is, so yeah. This is like a, for a tiki cocktail. It's like a multi-person bowl. This is from Don Fu. Um, so it's a limited edition, very special um, tiki bowl mug thing that Don Fu sees. You probably can't see that from there, but it says Don Fu. It's got the label right here. So I um, have to make some kind of massive drink in there when all this is done. Uh, we'll probably throw some overproof in there, just killing the jerks. Um, yep. And then we can all share a communal cocktail like we used to do before all the craziness. And if I'm not mistaken, Milton, you can always correct me uh, later, but um, I believe that the uh, Don Ku bowls, these are the last couple ones that, that you guys have left, so um, yeah, we got one of the last ones. Yeah, and, I don't uh, know if they have any left, but uh, Aku Aku, uh, Tiki Bar in downtown Orlando uh, had these, so that's where we were able to purchase that, so um, they're obviously not open as a bar right now. I know they're doing some to-go cocktails. Um, really, if Orlando is closer, we would love to help those guys out, grab a to-go cocktail from them. But for anybody that's close by in Orlando, uh, definitely stop in and see those guys. Those are, those are good people, and they all need us right now. Um, so a little, a little PSA from me is, you know, please, guys, in this time, um, all of our service industry friends are really struggling right now. They don't have income. Um, they, they, their jobs were just kind of ripped out from under them. Uh, so if your community allows it, uh, if you're able to go to your local restaurants and do takeout or delivery, Please support your local businesses. Um, I know here in Florida, a lot of the bars are able to do to-go cocktails. So they'll mix up uh, the, the juice part of it. Um, they can sell you a bottle of rum to go along with it. You can kind of make your own. I think uh, Death or Glory down there in uh, Del Rey is doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really have like cocktail bars, fancy <laughs> cocktail bars here in, uh, in Sebastian where we live. Nope. Uh, so really, if, if you kind of go, you can go pick up a 
bottle of beer, but we don't drink beer, so. Uh, but we are trying to support our local restaurants as much as we can. I encourage you guys to do that if uh, your, you know, your current community uh, restrictions uh, allow for that. We've got a couple more people join us. So my friend Kelly from high school. Kelly, how you doing? Hey, Kelly. And, uh, and Neil. Neil from the Rum Buddies is on too. So how you doing, Cheers. Neil? Cheers to you. Happy Friday. Um, sorry we missed the, uh, the Rum Buddy social online. But uh, yeah, we're hoping to do a couple more of these live videos like this, making cocktails, talking about our rum. Um, I'd like to do a Mai Tai one. Uh, mai Tais are one of those drinks that are uh, very controversial because there's... That's another pink drink. <laughs> it's not a not pink drink. It's not a pink drink. But it's a... Uh, Brown, ugly drink. So we can, <laughs> go, put it in we can go through the recipe that we use to make the Mai Tais. And, uh, and of course, we always welcome recipes from our friends. We've had uh, some of our friends give us recipes. Uh, we don't always have the exact ingredients for the recipes that we receive. So sometimes we have to tweak it. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun uh, sharing these uh, cocktail recipes. And now that we're doing this live, which will be fun, we'll try to bring a new cocktail to you every now and then. And, and also feature stuff from our collection here. We have several rums here. Some of them we haven't even tasted. The bottles are still closed. Um, we have several that we have tasted. Can, can I show can I, what I'm so excited about? Oh yeah, yeah. Talk okay. about our new, new purchase here. So this is kind of our dry run, right? We really haven't done a live video out of our bar before, so we wanted to test it out. We figured daiquiri was a good thing to share on Friday, get everybody, um, you know, kind of mixing some cocktails with us. But we are going to do another live video of this beautiful product right here. I'm going to walk over. Tell me when I'm close enough. <laughs> Can you guys see? see? Hold it up a little bit higher, a little bit closer. So that's the Savannah rum. Uh, Missy purchased a couple bottles online. We had it delivered the other day. It's uh, Habitation Bellier, or Bellier, however you want to pronounce it. Depends on how French you are. Exactly. But yeah, we ordered three bottles because none of the liquor stores here will carry it. And Five Star, which is supposed to carry it up in Orlando, we have not been able to get up there to see if they have it in stock yet. So Missy went ahead and ordered a couple bottles for us. And we haven't tasted it yet here. We did taste it at the Rum Congress. Uh, a couple months ago, but uh, we are looking forward to cracking that open and giving it a taste here at home. Yeah, so we'll walk you guys through this one. This is probably the most amazing egg rum I have ever tasted. And we've tasted some good rums. We it's have a few, you know, we've been around so. a little bit around these distilleries. Um, this one is in Reunion Island, uh, which is uh, for those of you geographically challenged, like I sometimes can be with the uh, middle of the United States. Uh, so Reunion Island is uh, in the Indian Ocean, so if you think about Africa, you think about Madagascar to the east, this is like to the northeast of Madagascar. We actually learned something about the travel to Reunion Island, because it is a French island, it is the longest domestic flight in the world. When you fly from Paris to Reunion Island, you're still within French borders. So it's the longest domestic flight that you can take. Interesting. And, and Joe being a you know, fairly tall, larger individual, he is so excited about making that flight. Like, I'm booking that trip as soon as all this blows over. Um, so yeah, he, he loves the long flights in coach. That's his favorite thing to do. I'm going to start making her pay for uh, business class for me so I can get the cushy seat. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that ain't happening. We also had uh, Alex join us, and uh, Greg Hill is watching, so hi Alex and Greg. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's not really a show, it's just a little video. But yeah, thanks for joining us with our uh, shaking daiquiris that we've made tonight. Looks like you need to catch up. I've yeah, I haven't been sitting as much, I've been talking more. Yeah. Uh, Carly has asked that we create a con uh, cocktail for her. Okay. Watermelon or bubble gum? Oh, Carly, we don't have those kind of flavors here. We're serious rum collectors, not We me. could get. <laughs> real watermelon and use watermelon juice in a cocktail. Good. Oh, water, how about a watermelon mojito? I have done watermelon uh, mojitos. We have fresh mint outside, I think, and it didn't die. No, the mint's looking good right okay. now. So. Uh, but yeah, we could experiment and come up with uh, maybe a new cocktail for Carly. Let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we, um, I'm trying to think. There, there was a watermelon rum that Joe uh, picked up and brought into the bar. And don't talk about that. I won't talk about it. The label of the bottle was like a scratch and sniff, and it came over and I was like, this is why I can't let him talk by himself. Um, but you know, I need to be supervised at all times. We, we are not rum snobs. We, uh, you know, every rum is welcome in our bar. Um, as long as it's a rum, as long as it's made from 
some product from Sugar Cane, um, as long as it kind of meets the, the basic qualifications there, we'll welcome it in here, we'll give it a try, and uh, you know, let you guys know what we think. Uh, we do have flavored rums in our collection. Uh, we try to stick to um, things that are a little more like small batch, um, local, local distilleries here in the States or in the islands are making, uh, preferably with some natural ingredients. Um, so yes, the Key is a great example of that uh, over in Sarasota. Uh, they use, you know, real, real coconut, real toasted coconut, uh, real coffee, they have a new coffee run that came out. Um, watermelon, I don't know, watermelon is one of those tricky things, I don't know how easy that is to really infuse real watermelon into rum. Yeah, I feel like it's more flavored with a syrup or, or something. But yeah. we also, we will bring in flavors that are unique. Uh, cilantro lime, or cilantro, cilantro and mango is one of the ones that we have. Uh, oh, yeah. From one of our uh, one of the rum producers here in Florida. Mango cilantro. Mango cilantro. There it is. Oh, um, here. We'll go ahead. Give these we'll guys a shout out. This is a Sandy Feet rum. These guys are um, uh, more or less Fort Lauderdale. It's a specific area of that uh, that, that general metropolitan area. Um, but uh, super super nice people that make this. Um, and very unique, right? So I don't think anybody else has a mango cilantro flavored rum. I mean. You think of mango and you think of cilantro and you're like, huh, would those really go together? But I, I think they do. It's really nice. It's like a nice, refreshing. We should try this and maybe maybe a daiquiri. I mean, yeah, that could work in a yeah. daiquiri. It'd be a little bit sweeter, but it definitely could work. Uh, I would make everything in a daiquiri. That's really yeah. Go to. She wouldn't even touch any other cocktail. She could have a daiquiri in it. That's right. Uh, but yeah, like we try to find unique flavors. There's a the one thing that seems to be really kicking off right now is the coffee rums. They seem to be everywhere anymore. So now we're trying to be a little more selective with which ones we pick up, but we'll always give anything a try uh, for the first time. Um, amazingly, at uh, the Lakeland Rum Food and Rum Festival, uh, Central Florida, Central Florida, Florida food and, and Rum, rum and food, food and Rum Festival. Yeah, one of those things. Yes, in Lakeland, Florida. We actually tried uh, Kraken's uh, coffee rum, which we were hesitant about, but it actually has a pretty nice flavor. It's almost like a cold brew. Yeah, I think they use cold brew. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think it's infused with cold brew. So uh, that was interesting to us, but um, we're probably not going to use that in a daiquiri. No, last <laughs> night the coffee, I'm going to have to say no to that. Oh. Probably not yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, trying some new things, so the next cocktail coming at you, we'll uh, maybe put a post out on Facebook beforehand, yeah. so we know we're going to do a live video. This was kind of last minute, we just decided to go live and talk about making a classic shaking daiquiri and, uh, and share our bar and our, our cocktail with you. So, um, I'm going to let Missy wrap it up here, and we'll go ahead and close it out. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, we certainly welcome your feedback. If you have any questions for us, hit us up on our Facebook page or our Instagram. Uh, so, Facebook is Rum Traveler. Instagram is the underscore rum underscore traveler, because Instagram is not pay. Um, that was all that was available. Uh, but we're happy to uh, take the feedback and the questions, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys uh, very soon with the next cocktail.